The collapse of America and Europe has already begun. All that we are arguing about now is how fast the collapse will be. Are you going to bet that this disaster will not affect you very much? I hope not. Smart people prepare for the worst and pray that it never hits them. Welcome to the Shotcast. I'm John Little, recording on a hot Tainan evening on Saturday, July 18th, 2020. Before going on, hit subscribe and click that bell to receive a notification when the next Shotcast happens. And if you like what you hear, hit that like button. All of that really helps Omega Shock and the Shotcast. If, and if you didn't like it, well, you know what to do. And if you want to help keep Omega Shock alive with a donation, there's a link below that will help you do that. I am grateful for all who have contributed to keeping Omega Shock alive. I could not do this without it. I'm also thankful for all the prayers from readers and listeners. Thank you so very much. Please keep praying for this ministry. Also, subscribe to The Shock Letter and receive my articles in your inbox at theshockletter.com. You can also find my posts on Facebook and Twitter. I have two books that you can read for free. They're called When Jacob Returns and Ezekiel's Fire. You can find links for all of that below. Now let's get back to today's topic. Preparing for the Worst the Weekend Shotcast for July 18th, 2020. I got a bit of a jolt on Thursday. I was out with my wife when she told me that she had ordered 6,000 in tea in vouchers. And I thought, vouchers? Vouchers for what? Oblivious to my confusion, she went on to say that the cost will be 2,000 in tea to participate in this program and there were certain limitations to what we could use them for. As she went on describing the details of what these vouchers were, I realized that the greatest depression had arrived in Taiwan. Now, 6,000 NT, or new Taiwan dollars, isn't all that much. It's about US $200, since $1 is worth 29 NT and 49 and a half, whatever which can be a bit intimidating when you see a McDonald's hamburger listed for $100. Yikes. Since everyone assumes that you know the price of everything is in New Taiwan dollars, they leave off the NT or the New Taiwan. I've been here for 10 years and I still get a bit of a shock at times. However, this voucher program is a big deal here. The Taiwanese are extremely frugal, and their government has reflected that by keeping the national debt to around a third of its GDP. So when they come out with a voucher program like this, it's serious. That was the final wake-up call for me. Over the past few years, we've been pretty careful to have a bit extra of everything, so we've been prepared for any short-term disruption. But I think that we need to up our game a bit. Now that Taiwan is being affected by the global depression, how about you? Taiwan is pretty sta a pretty stable country we, with a society that doesn't expect much from their government. Also, the Taiwanese still have a social memory of what times were like before her meteoric rise in affluence. So when things get really bad, they'll tighten their belts and keep going without falling apart at least too much. Of course, if China invades this island, all bets are off. Having said that, Mrs. Little and I didn't come here to play it safe. So, what about your situation? Will your society fall apart when the economy collapses? Will the food distribution networks keep running? Are you ready for food prices to increase? That last one is probably the most immediate issue. Food prices will increase. In fact, the price of everything is going to increase or disappear from store shelves completely. We're already starting to see some of that here in Taiwan, and I'm betting that you're going to see that as well. More importantly, are you in a safe place? If not, do you have a safe place that you can get to? 
And do you have friends and family that you can depend on? I cannot tell you with certainty that, or complete certainty, that Pastor Coverstone is right, that his dreams are from God. But I can tell you that what he foresees is a lot like what has happened before under similar circumstances. Only this time, we live in a high-tech society that can destroy itself far more quickly than ever before in human history. The Roman Empire went from business as usual to complete collapse in under nine years. If an Iron Age culture can fall apart that quickly, how fast will America and Europe fall? Are you prepared for the worst? If not, now is the time to start. But that's not all we saw in the past week. We actually began, and we've been talking about this for a while, the fulfillment of Isaiah 19, which is the drying up of the Nile, or the shrinking of the Nile more accurately, and the destruction of Egypt as we know it today. Please pay attention to this. We now have proof that the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam is filling. The Nile is now beginning to shrink, and it will only get worse and worse as we go from here. We even have pictures and satellite photos of the Nile actually being less, having less volume than it did just a few weeks ago. And we also see the reservoir behind this dam growing. So the beginning of the end for Egypt has already started. So please pay attention, and as long as you are subscribed to this channel and listening to or reading Omega Shock, then yes, you will, you will be aware of what's going on. Then we had an interesting allegory pop up, talking about the sinking of the Titanic and the fall of the American economy. We have been fascinated with the sinking of the RMS Titanic. Everyone thought that it was unsinkable at the time. But reality proved everyone wrong. And just like the Titanic, our society is just as fragile. In fact, America and Europe have hit an iceberg and water is pouring in. The pumps that are evacuating or trying to get rid of all that water that's pouring in have kept us afloat for the moment. But they cannot keep going forever. In fact, they're losing ground. Eventually, the pumps will fail and our great civilization will slip beneath the waves. And then remember that the Roman Empire fell for many of the same reasons that our civilization is falling. Unfortunately, our fall will be far more spectacular than Rome's. Maybe it will even be televised. It certainly wasn't during the fall of Rome. And Martin Armstrong has a few comments that struck me fairly hard. In his article titled, Argentina, Our Model for What Lies Ahead? He, leaves, he makes this statement, I am deeply concerned for the rising civil unrest the computer has been projecting worldwide. And when he says something like this, unrest is coming. You may not be in America or in Europe, but it's coming to your doorstep. And then in his, in his post, Trend in Interest Rates, he says, Clearly, these governments are not stupid. They have to realize how much revenue has collapsed and how much damage they have caused to the people and the economy. Our models are projecting higher interest rates ahead, and this reflects their high-risk gamble on trying to overthrow Trump. What they fail to grasp is that the private sector has lost all confidence in governments, and as such, they have destroyed the old financial system of perpetual borrowing. As fiscal mismanagement abounds, interest rates will rise to reflect credit risk. The central banks are powerless to prevent this rise. The Fed cannot buy all the state debt and more than the ECB will be authorized to buy all sovereign debt in the Eurozone. We have reached the point of no return." Close quote. And when someone like Martin Armstrong says something like that, please get ready. Then let's talk about madness. I believe that the madness that we see right now is a foretaste of the same kind of madness that the Antichrist will use to gain control. I found this in an article titled, When Will the Madness End? From the American Institute of Economic Research, I think. 
A E, you know, A I E R. The writer, Jeffrey A. Tucker, was in New York City in March when he met a psychiatrist who said this quote, Madness is all around us. The public is adopting a personality disorder I've been treating my whole career. What is it that you do? I asked, or the writer asked. I'm a practicing psychiatrist who specializes in anxiety disorders, paranoid delusions, and irrational fear. I've been treating this in individuals as a specialist. It's hard enough to contain these problems in normal times. What's happening now is a spread of this serious medical condition to the whole population. It can happen with anything. But here, we see a primal fear of disease turning into mass panic. It seems almost deliberate. It is tragic. Once this starts, it could take years to repair the psychological damage." Close quote. The writer then said, quote, It took weeks, however, even for me to realize that he, the psychiatrist, was right. The main threat society faced was a psychological condition. Close quote. The writer, Tucker, then quotes the from a book called Extraordinary Popular Delusions in the Madness of Crowds by Charles Mackey from 1841. Quote, In reading the history of nations, we find that like individuals, they have their whims and their pe peculiarities, their seasons of excitement and recklessness, when they care not what they do. We find that whole communities suddenly fix their minds upon one object and go mad in its pursuit that millions of people become simultaneously impressed with one delusion and run after it till their attention is caught by some new folly more captivating than the first. We see one nation suddenly seize from its highest to its lowest members with a fierce desire of military glory, another as suddenly becoming crazed upon a religious scruple and neither of them recovering its senses until it has shed rivers of blood and sowed a harvest of groans and tears to be reaped by its posterity. Men, it has been well said, think in herds. It will be seen that they go mad in herds while they only recover their senses slowly and one by one." Close quote. The writer goes on to issue a mea culpa, a I've been wrong talking about how his expectations of a return to normalcy were deeply incorrect. Quote, I was preposterously wrong, along with my four-month-old feeling that all of this stuff would stop on Monday. The psychiatrist I met in New York was correct. The drug of fear had already invaded the public mind. Once there, it takes a very long time to recover. This is made far worse by politics, which has only fed the beast of fear. This is the most politicized disease in history, and doing so has done nothing to help manage it and, and in much to make it all vastly worse. We've learned through, in continuing the quote, we've learned through this ordeal that despite our technology, our knowledge, our history of building prosperity and peace, we are no smarter than our ancestors and, by some measures, not as smart as our parents and grandparents. The experience with COVID has caused a mass reversion to the superstitions and panics that sporadically define the human experience of ages past." Close quote. As Charles Mackey said about people, they go mad in herds while they only recover their senses slowly and one by one. That, brothers and sisters, is our future. Madness. Madness everywhere. And then, every time that I see something like this, I'm still shocked. It came from an article titled, Pornhub offers free advertising for small businesses crushed by pandemic. I can hardly believe it. This is just more evidence of the need for America's destruction. We are no longer ashamed of our fornication. In fact, we rejoice when they do something like this to help the common businessman. We revel in our sin. 
And the evil isn't just fornication. It's also the evil that we've done to other countries and ourselves. We sent out our soldiers to kill others, and it has destroyed them. This is a big part of why I'm against America's wars. In addition to the evil that we have done to others, we are forcing our own soldiers to commit these evils. They joined the army and marines to fight for freedom. And the price that they paid was more than they could bear. The weight of these men, the weight that these men carry is beyond comprehension. And I am so, so sorry. And we were the ones who did it to them. This reflection comes from an article I saw titled, Army's Captain America, who served nearly 12 combat tours, dies by suicide after moving to the Dis Washington, D.C. I look at the picture of this poor guy who took his own life, and I can only say that I'm so very sorry for what we forced him to do, for what we tricked him into doing. And then there's the Central Intelligence Agency. That's all a part of this. And the evil of their heroin trade. That was from a title, uh, from a title of an article, I Could Live With That, How the CIA Made Afghanistan Safe for the Opium Trade on Counterpunch.org. One of the greatest evils committed by the CIA is the global trade in heroin. What they have done is so foul that I can hardly believe it. For this alone, they should be smashed into a thousand pieces and scattered to the winds. But they become far too strong, too wealthy, and too powerful. But there is this good news, and I'm sorry that I only have this piece of good news to share with you. It comes from a GoFundMe campaign raising money to buy Goya products for food pantries. And that's because the CEO and founder of Goya was supporting or made a statement of support for Donald Trump, which caused the cancel culture to try and start a boycott of Goya. Well, it backfired. Customers are buying Goya foods after the leftists pledge a boycott over the CEO's Trump support. And that was from the Daily Wire. And then let's end on a lighter note. I saw a rather serious article from uh, Rabobank, a, in its title, A Man Walks Into a Soviet Car Showroom, and it's a joke from Soviet Times. And it goes like this. A man goes into the Soviet car showroom and asks to buy a car. The disinterested salesman doesn't even put out a cigarette and says, We only take 100% cash payments. The man puts down a bag full of rubles on the table. The salesman sits up and counts them greedily. The only color is gray, he informs the customer as he counts. No problem, the man replies. When will it arrive? The salesman slowly looks through a dog-eared book and says, Hmm, five years from today. The customer nods sagely and then asks, Morning or afternoon? What do you care, morning or afternoon? asks the salesman. It's five years from now. Well, says the customer, I'm getting my fridge in the morning. As they used to say in Soviet Russia, we pretend to work and they pretend to pay us. And that, my friends, is socialism and where the world is trying to go. That's it for this shot cast. If you appreciated this video, hit like. Then hit subscribe and that little bell. Also, leave a comment. I look forward to seeing what you have to say about what was said here. Your input is truly welcome. And if you didn't like my Russian accent, let me know. And again, if you want to help Omega Shock and the Shockcast stay alive, there's a link below that can help you do that. You can also get my articles and updates in your inbox through the Shock Letter at theshockletter.com. And read my books for free. When Jacob Returns and Ezekiel's Fire, they just might save your life.